Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. In this video, we learn about a type of device called a magnetometer which is used to measure the magnetic moment of a bar magnet. Before we do that, we we'll look at one small device which is called a dip circle. And a dip circle is used to measure the dip at a particular place. If you remember from the last lecture, the dip is the angle made by the magnetic field and the horizontal direction and it is taken positive if the angle is in the downward direction. If the dip points in the word if the magnetic field points in the vertically upward direction as it does in the southern hemisphere, then the dip is negative, otherwise the dip is positive. So the device used to measure a dip uh, the dip is called a dip circle and it's relatively straightforward. You have a compass needle which has markings on its ends. This would be 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 0 degrees, 0 degrees. And this is rotated in the vertical plane. And if we keep rotating it, the needle kept at its center will keep changing its direction because the needle doesn't point towards the net magnetic field the needle points towards the magnetic field it can feel and in this case the needle cannot be pointing outside the plane so it has to um, act according to the component of magnetic field in this vertical plane right so now let's imagine for a second we are looking from above and we'll take a different perspective so this straight line would be exactly what we're seeing if you look at this circle from above Right, so there will be a component of magnetic field in the vertical direction and since this compass is always in the vertical plane, it will always react to the vertical component completely. However, if the horizontal direction of ma the magnetic field is this, the vertical direction will be inside or outside the plane. Let's assume it's outside the plane right now, uh, coming towards the viewer. So if this is the m vertical component of magnetic field and this is the horizontal component of the magnetic field, then the compass needle in this circular plane, vertical plane, will react according to both of them. Right. And it will, let's say, point in this direction. This is the vertical component. This is the horizontal component. And this angle measured, delta, will be the dip. Right. So we'll be able to measure dip by tan delta is equal to BV by BH. Right. This would be the answer, but this would only be true if the horizontal magnetic field was in this direction. What is the what if the horizontal component of the magnetic field was in this direction, making an angle of 30 degrees? After all, all we know about this circle is that it is in the vertical plane. But in the vertical plane, this particular direction could be in the north-south direction or the east-west direction or any random direction. And it has nothing to do with the direction of the horizontal component of the magnetic field. So if BH is in this direction, then the needle cannot react to the perpendicular component of this horizontal magnetic field. It can only react to this component, which will be BS cos 30 degree. BH cos 30 degree. So in that case, tan delta will be BV by the horizontal component which it can react to which will be BH cos 30 degrees. But what we want is BV by BH because that is the actual dip. So what we can get from that is let's call this tan delta dash. So delta which will be the dip will actually be such that tan delta is equal to tan delta dash into cos 30 degrees. Right. Because when the horizontal magnetic field is in this direction, then it reacts to BH cos 30 degrees. So this component will be BH cos 30 degrees. This component as always will be BV because this is always in the vertical plane. And this angle delta dash in that case will be tan delta dash is equal to BV by BH cos 30. And the true dip, this is called the true dip and this is called the apparent dip. Right. So if we keep rotating this, uh, um, this uh, circular scale along this vertical axis if we keep rotating it then this delta dash will keep on changing as this theta changes but the actual dip will be this particular value so there are two methods which we use to calculate the actual dip the first is the uh, slightly more straightforward method the second is the mathematical method so in the first method what we'll do is we'll take this scale 90 0 We'll keep rotating it about this vertical axis. Let's say this is the needle. We'll keep rotating about this vertical axis until the needle becomes completely vertical. 
so tan delta will be bv by bh right not always but in this particular case whatever the delta is so when delta is 90 degrees tan delta is infinite that means bh is zero or not bh but actually the component of bh right so if we keep rotating this wire which if i look from the top looks like this and if we keep rotating it such that this is the direction of bv but this is the direction of bh in that case it will not feel any component of bh and the needle will be completely vertical right so after that what we do is the first thing we keep rotating it until the needle is completely vertical once the needle is completely vertical we rotate it by 90 degrees in this direction so once we see it to be vertical we just rotate it by 90 degrees and now it will be in this direction it will react completely to the vertical component and completely to the horizontal component and then whatever the dip is here whatever delta is tan delta in that case it will be bv by bh because now this plane is along BH. Earlier it was perpendicular. We shifted it by 90 degrees. Along it is BH. So then this will give me the answer. There's another way to do it in which we don't actually need to place it along the magnetic field. We can just place it in any direction. And what will happen is the original equation. Let's call it tan delta dash. So tan delta dash will be BV. Sorry, BV by BH cos theta. Right? Le cos theta. So let's say theta is the angle between this particular plane of this scale and BH, right? What you do is turn it by 90 degrees again. So now it will make an angle 90 degree minus theta will BH. So in that case, we'll get tan delta double dash, a different dip, which will be BV by BH cos of 90 minus theta or sine theta, right? And uh, if you can manipulate these, I'll leave it up to you. You need to find BV by BH and BV by BH is tan delta. So if you manipulate these, what you'll get is cot square delta dash plus cot square delta double dash is equal to cot square delta. Right. Again, we see that if one of these cot square delta is zero, that means delta is 90 degrees. In that case, the other will be the actual value, which is the one you get by shifting at 90 degrees. So you can calculate it for this and then it's perpendicular or you can rotate it until you actually get in this direction, rotate it by 90 and then you won't have to use any mathematics. Right. So this is how we measure the dip at a particular point. Now, before looking at magnetometers, we look at two small concepts which are used in magnetometers. The first is a very simple concept called the neutral point. And we know that if a compass is placed in the horizontal plane, it will point towards the horizontal component of the magnetic field. If there is no external magnetic field present, it will point towards the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field. If there are other fields present, it will point towards the net magnetic field. Right. Now, if there is a particular point at which the external magnetic field in the horizontal direction is equal and opposite to the Earth's magnetic field in the horizontal direction, then at that point, the net horizontal magnetic field will be zero and the compass will be able to stay in any direction because it does not have any torque on it. Those points are called neutral points. So neutral points are not points where magnetic field is zero net. It is the point where net horizontal magnetic field is zero. It can still be vertical. Right. The second component is also, the concept is also easy enough. It is called the tangent law of perpendicular fields. Right. And what the tangent law of perpendicular fields says is that if there is no magnetic field present external, then the compass needle points towards BH. Right. Now, if there is an external magnetic field present, that magnetic field could be B. And if it just happens to be perpendicular to BH, in that case, the needle would now point towards the resultant of B and BH. So let's say this was BH initially and the needle pointed in this direction. Now we attach another external magnetic field B, which happens to be uh, perpendicular to BH. Then the needle will face in this direction. This angle will be theta and tan theta will be B by BH. So all tangent law of perpendicular field says is that B is equal to BH tan theta. So this gives us a very nice way of measuring any magnetic field in the horizontal direction. You just first remove the magnetic field, let the needle point towards the horizontal component, usually it will point towards north. 
and then you attach the magnetic field in such a way that it is perpendicular to this direction that is in the east west direction you see where the resultant needle points and use the formula bh tan theta and that will give you the original magnetic field right so now let's get on to magnetometers and there are two types of magnetometers we will study and the first one is the deflection magnetometer and the second one is oscillation magnetometer and the deflection magnetometer allows us to measure m by bh for any bar magnet so if you give me any bar magnet using the deflection magnetometer i will be able to calculate the ratio of the magnetic moment of that bar magnet and the horizontal component of the earth's magnetic field then you have an oscillation magnetometer and that allows us to measure m multiplied by bh so the magnetic moment multiplied by the horizontal component of the magnetic field so if you wanted the magnetic moment of a bar magnet all you would need to do is use the deflection magnetometer to get m by bh and the oscillation magnetometer to get m into bh right and then once you know these two you can calculate m and bh individually so let's start with the oscillation magnetometer first So oscillation magnetometers are fairly straightforward. Uh, we take a standard thread which can produce a torsional torque, restoring torque, and we let the bar magnet hang on this thread. Right. So if we look at it from the top, from this position, we'll just see a thread, and we'll see a bar magnet like this attached to the thread. Let's take the dimensions of the bar magnet to be. A and B. Let's take the bar magnet's mass to be m. Uh, let's take the bar magnet's mass to be something. Else. I'll just for this case take the bar magnet's mass to be w. Uh, the it signifies the weight generally, but I just take it to be the mass in this case because capital M we have to reserve for magnetic moment, right? And small m we have to reserve for pole strength. So I'm in a bind. I can't use small m or magnetic m. I'll just use mass. Just to avoid confusion. So instead of using the symbol, I'll just use the actual word. Right now, this is how we would look at it from the top. We have this uh, um, rotating, uh, tor producing torsional torque. We have this rope, and when we leave it just as it is, then it will point towards the south south north direction. It will point towards the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field. Right now, what we'll do is we'll shift it by an angle theta. Right, a small angle theta. So this is the new rectangular bar magnet. So now it will experience a ring, it will experience a restoring torque tau, which we've already calculated. Since this side will experience uh, m b h, and this side will experience m b h. Here, this small m is the pole strength, so the torque will be two times m b h times sine theta times Sorry, this is L. Again, we take the total length to be 2L when we talk about a bar magnet. So this is L, right? And 2 into m into L will be capital M, the magnetic moment. M into bh into sine theta. So we get with the vector equation torque is equal to capital M cross P, right? We've already seen this equation. So that can be written in this case as m b sine theta, and that is equal to I alpha. Right, the restoring torque is equal to the moment of inertia multiplied by alpha. If theta is small, then sine theta can be written to be equal to theta, and there should be a minus sign because it's a restoring torque. From that, we get alpha is equal to minus m b by i theta. So minus m b by i in an angular simple harmonic motion plays the rule of minus omega squared. That means omega is root of m b by i. This b is b h by the way, the horizontal component of the magnetic field. So omega is root of m b h by i. From that we can get the time period that is equal to two pi by omega, or two pi root of i by m b h. 
So now what we do is we just tilt it by theta. Generally, we don't do it mechanically. We bring another magnet close to it and remove it, and we start it into angular oscillations. And then we say measure the time taken for 20 or 30 oscillations divide by 20 or 30. We get the time period of each oscillation. So the time period is experimentally observed. We can measure it. I we already know. I in this case the moment of inertia. Since if we take it across this one, it will be m a square by 12 mass into a square by 12. This will be mass into b square by 12. So by the perpendicular law, moment of inertia, this will be mass into a square plus b squared by 12. Right. So this is the moment of inertia. We know the time period, so we can directly calculate mbh. Mbh comes out to be 4 pi square i by t square. Where i is equal to this, so i is directly measured for a rect. This assumes that it is a rectangular bar magnet, right? So i assumes it's a rectangular bar magnet. This is the moment of inertia. You measure the time period, and from an oscillation magnetometer, you can directly calculate the value of the magnetic moment of the magnetometer multiplied by bh. Now, like I said, for diffraction magnetometer, we can get m by bh and use it to calculate both m and bh. But that is not what is generally done in practice. Generally, we take a, mag a bar magnet of a particular known magnetic moment. We measure the time period for that. Then we'll take a new bar magnet of an unknown magnetic moment. We'll measure the time period from that. And from those two, we can actually compare the magnetic moments of any bar magnet. So knowing the magnetic moment of one particular bar magnet, you can compare it to magnetic moments of other bar magnets. That is sort of like determining this whole proportionality constant. Right? So now we need to do deflection magnetometers. Uh, actually, I think this video is long enough and deflection magnetometers are quite a lengthy topic. So I'll do that in the second uh, video of magnetometers. Thank you.